Hey everyone, I'm back finally. Yeah, I know it's been a whole month. <laughs> I fell into a vicious cycle and I couldn't get out. Call work. <laughs> I've just been working and on the weekend I just have not been feeling like filming. So yeah, it's been a whole month since I did a film. So I'm back. I'm going to try to make up for those weeks I missed uh, filming. I'm not going to make any promises. I'm going to try to post at least two videos a week to make up for those uh, the weeks I missed in um, June, this June. Because today is the last day of June and we'll be in July, people. And then we'll be on having, we'll be celebrating July 4th. Yeah, these days are flying by. And once you miss one video and then it's just all down here from there. So, I'm going to try to keep them coming out. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say on that subject. I hope everyone's been doing well. Hope you've been reading some fantastic romances. Hope all of them been good. Um, I've, I finally finished a couple of books. Some of them were good. and Well, I'll say most of them were good, but some of them I like more than I like others. So, I'm going to... Uh, first book I have is... Um, I think I showed this. It's Stone Cold Heart. I got this from the library. Um, I've already taken it back to the library, but I did. I really enjoyed it. I gave it um, four stars. Uh, this was on uh, Sarah Lockhart and Nolan Hess. Uh, Sarah is a, and I think I mentioned I like Laura Griffin before. She's a romantic suspense writer. This is book number 13 in the Tracer series. I've read quite a few books from the Tracer series. I don't read all of them. I, if I like the synopsis, I'll read them because you don't have to read them in order. Uh, it's, each one is on a different couple. And this is on Sarah Lockhart. She's an anthropologist. And on Nolan Hess. Nolan Hess. And it's usually dealing with the Daphi Center. I think I mentioned the Daphi Center before. She works for the Daphi Center. And she gets called into a, a small town because she's she living in this. I don't forget where this is located at. But she's living in the city and, you know, you got your outskirts of little smaller little towns. So she get called to this small town to go and um, because they found some bones and she gets to she has to go into the crime scene and do the crime scene. And that's where she meet Nolan. So it's all about them and their romance and them trying to find out who is this because it turns out that um, from what she finds out from the crime scene and uh, that this is going to be like a, a serial killer is running loose. It's running amok. So it's all about them trying to find out who this person is and them trying to figure out how they're going to have a relationship. Because like I said, she lives in town. It's like a two or three hour drive to the town that he's at because he's the, um, I don't know if he's the chef. Uh, I think he's a he's just a detective on the police force there. It's a small police force. So, but I really really enjoyed it. Uh, I really love Laura Griffin writing, and I really enjoyed this. One, and I will be purchasing this book. Uh, next book is was also from the library, and that was uh, the Kiss Quotient by Helen. It's her last name Hong. I cannot pronounce her last name, so I'm not even going to try to uh, mess her last name up. And let me see. Can I pull that up here? The Kiss Quotient. I think I gave it three and a half stars, and this is book one in the Kiss. It's gonna. I think it's gonna be a three book series, but I enjoyed the writing. I enjoyed the story, but it just did not affect me like I. I really enjoyed the um, Stone Cold Heart, and this is on Stella Lane and Michael Hun. A fun. His last name is spelled P H A N, and he's Vietnamese and Swedish, and. This is about, they meet is when Helen, Helen is, has Asperger's, uh, you know, she don't like to be touched or she just have, uh, yeah, she don't want to be touched. She just have stuff have to be in a certain place. You know, people who have Asperger's stuff have to be in a certain, how, how they like it, you know, or they get uh, agitated or whatever, but she wants to be more, I, I don't know if it's outgoing or she just wants to. Have more experience with other people, so she hired a male escort. And Michael is a male escort is because um, his father left them in a bad situation. He took money out of the bank, took their money and everything, and then his mother ended up getting sick. I'm not gonna. I'll let you read it if you want to find out what happened and why he has to. Uh, he's been doing male escort work because his mother owns a cleaner, and he does like they does they do alterations and different stuff at, at the cleaners and he worked he worked there too with his mother he's doing the male escort to help his mother and i really enjoyed the story it just didn't have those certain moments in there 
like some books I read and it's just like there's moments in those books that I want to go back and read again. There was nothing in here that I wanted to go back and read again. Um, but I really enjoyed her writing and I will be continuing the uh, series because the next book in the series is The Bride Test. And I think that's it's going to be on Michael's uh, cousin. I think his uh, cousin also has Asperger's. So uh, I will be reading the the second book, The Bride Test. Hopefully I like that a little bit more um, that I might want to purchase it. But I'm not going to purchase purchase the Kiss Quotient, but I'll recommend it. Try it out. I think you really like it. And let's see what else I had. Next I finished, um, let's see here. Um, now this was on my TBR. I got all my TBR. Those two books I got from the library. Uh, this one, um, I was. This was on my TBR. Meet the Earl at Midnight. I finally finished it. I've been trying to finish this for what a couple of weeks now. I finally finished it yesterday, and this is on um, Lydia Montgomery and Edward Greenwich. He's uh, he's the Earl, and this is they meet is when um, Lydia's stepfather and her stepbrother work for they uh, they work for the earl and they've stolen from the earl and they know the earl is looking for a wife because he um he was in an accident so a side of his face uh got burnt so he don't go out into uh public anymore but he need to he's a scientist he's also a scientist because he he was like the second son but his brother and father both have end up passing away so now the earl has come to him and now he has to try to be a earl and he still want to do his scientific he still want to do he still you know he still want to be a scientist he's very bookish and uh so he was engaged but i think uh, when the woman saw his face you know how that is everybody loves somebody who looked beautiful or whatever so i guess she couldn't put up with it. she couldn't she couldn't handle the situation when his face got messed up so now he's looking for a wife and so when the uh Lydia's brother and um father end up stealing from him he say I guess they offer her up as a uh, solution to their problem you know they don't want to go to jail or whatever and he agree with them so that, um he think they've told Lydia but they haven't so she um they sent her a note tell telling um Lydia to meet them at this at this cab uh tavern or whatever and that's when she find out what has happened. So it's all about them getting together and most of this take place it took place in the first scene was like in a tavern and then the rest most of this book is like a slow burn. So if you like slow burn burn romances and you don't like a lot of sexual content, this would be a book for you because it don't have a lot of sexual content. Um, it's just mostly slow burn romance about them getting to know each other and he do um, it's not like uh, he want her to be his mistress he wants to marry her he does he does wants to marry her and um, so it's about them getting to know each other her moving into his house and them just getting to know each other and most of it this scene take place at at his house and um, I think at the last scene it they it was somewhere else but most of this take place at the house and it was just very slow to me i the character was okay but i really didn't get into the characters um so i just gave this a, a three stars and it's meet the earl at midnight by gino conkle i hope i'm pronouncing that last name and i i will read i like her writing the writing style was fine it's just that it moved very slow and because I've uh, bought purchased other books by Gina Conco and I, I really enjoyed them. So I will continue to read her books. This one just didn't do it for me. And this is, like I said, Meet the Earl at Midnight. I gave it three stars by, by Gina Conco. And next, um, as I mentioned, that I went to the library. And don't go to the library, people. They had a... Um, they had a book sale at the library, so I was like, let me go and see what's going on there. So when I got there, you, you know, I had, I got some books that I purchased, and I also looked around the library. Don't <laughs> don't go to the library and look around. So these I uh, borrowed from the library. This is um, Kelsey Cole's Shadow Claim, and this is, I think this is a series, the, the Deckians, Deckian? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I don't know what book this is in the series and this is Shadow's Claim and um, I'm not too much into uh, vampires but I read the back of this 
and it sounded interesting. I was like, okay. So I checked this out at the library. Uh, this is like on, uh, what is this? His name is Trahan. And when they be, when you have vampires, these names, boy, they be throwing me all off. Trahan Decano, known as the Prince of Shadows, has spent his life serving his people. Stri striking in the night. I hope I'm pronouncing it. Striking in the night quietly executing any threat to their realm. The coldly disciplined swordsman has never desired anything for himself until he beholds Bernita? Bertina? Yeah. <laughs> the, shatter, the sheltered ward of two of the Lord's most fearsome villains. So I read that. I, I was like, this sounds pretty interesting. So I was like, let me try this out. And so this is a paranormal romance, and I think he's going to be a vampire. I think so. He said Prince of Shadows, so that's what made me think. So uh, I said, let me give this a try. So I'm going to check this out. I, like I said, I borrowed that from the library. And then I got um, The Highlander Takes a Bride by Lindsay Sands. I borrowed this one also. I'll read a little bit of this. Sword fighting, swearing, and riding astride come naturally to Saha Say Buchanan. Yeah, I'm missing the I'm butchering all these names today. <laughs> so just bear with me. Simpering and holding her tongue, definitely not. Raised alongside seven bolsterers. When it says she had seven brothers, so I know she was gonna be a tomboy. So I was like, she she gonna have some fire. So I was like, let me read this because I know she's gonna be going off on somebody. <laughs> so let me give this a try. Um, raised alone, seven bolsterous brother. What is this? Say these names. I'm just gonna call her Said. Has little interest in saddling herself with the husband until she glimpses the new Laird McDonald, bathing naked in the lock. Though she's far from a proper lady, the brawny Highlander makes Said feels every inch a woman. So I was like, okay, that sounds good. And I like Lindsay Sands. I haven't read anything by her in a while. So I said, let me give that one a try. Borrow that one. And then this one, Hard Rules, A Dirt. And so this is going to be a series. I think this is book one in the series, Hard Rules, A Dirty Money. No, I had some books by her before. I liked them. And yeah, her books get kind of steamy. So let me read the back of this one. The only man within the Brandon Empire with a moral compass, Shane Brandon, is ready to take his family business dealing legit, legitimate. His reckless and ruthless brother Derek wants to keep Brandon Enterprises cemented in lies, deceit, and corruption. But the harder Shane fights to pull the company back into the light, the darker he has to become. Then he meets Emily Stevens, a woman who not only stirs a ferocious sexual need in him, but becomes the only thing anchoring him between good and evil. Emily is consumed by Shane as she falls deeper into the all encompassing, encompassing passion that is this man. She trusts him. He trusts her. But therein lies the danger. Emily has a secret. The very thing that brought her to him in the first place. And that secret could destroy them both. So I'm wondering what that secret is. Is uh, she going to be some kind of detective uh, going undercover or something. I was like, that sounds interesting. So I was like, let me give this a try. And this is Hard Rules, A Dirty Money. I think this is book one in the Dirty Money series. So if I like this one, I will um, go and check out the uh, other one. Jones Hard Rules. Now those all I borrowed from the library. Um, these other ones are the ones that I bought at the... Um, I bought these at the library sale and I think I just paid um two dollars and fifty cents. I think all of these were like fifty cent. So I got this one. I like this cover on this, so I picked this up and then I like uh I've read a couple of books. Uh, I like you Eugenia Price. I love I like her writing. I haven't read anything by her in a long time. Uh so I said I'll get this one. This is called New Moon Rising. I read a little bit of this. Oh, this is this don't tell nothing about the book. Oh, this is this is nothing about the book. So let's skip that part. Let's go. I think I just bought this for the cover and cause it said Eugenia Price. I don't even think I read what this was about. So here is the maybe this is this is the synopsis. In these troubled times, one of American best. Nope, that's not it either. Let's keep on going. This don't this don't even have no synopsis. Oh my goodness. 
okay this is gonna be kind of different so yeah okay i'm gonna check it out i think i just bought this for the cover because yeah i don't even i didn't even read the back of this because this is not the synopsis this is just telling this is a um blurred from uh the cincinnati inquirer and book news okay well i'll give it a try but i just got it for the cover yeah <laughs> Next, I got uh, Iris Johans Johansson, Dead Aim, um, a romantic suspense. I read a little bit of this. A celebrated photo photojournalist, Alice Graham, has recorded some of her, the world's most tragic and heartbreaking stories, but her latest assignment has forced her across a dangerous line. At a dam, at a dam collapsed in. Abraho, Abraho Junction, Colorado. Alec witnesses a conspiracy that will soon. Sorry, my camera went out there. Uh, where was I at? Uh, Alex witnesses a conspiracy that will shock a nation if she can stay alive long enough to reveal the truth. For the collapse of the Abaho Dam was not an accident. The official story is just a cover up for a truth so frightening, so unthinkable that Alex must be silenced. Forever. Her only ally is Judd Morgan, a an ex convert, an ex convert commando with a checkered past and a team of assassins at his heels. Now she's marked for death by a new by an enemy who never misses, never forgives, never gives up, and who's already got her centered. Dead aim. That sounded interesting, so I would like let me try this out. And I like that cover too. And this is another Irish Johansson. Yeah, I'm on an Irish Johansson kick. And this is Bunny. I think this is already like a series, but I don't know what book it is in the series. But I'll read about a little bit of this. When Eve Duncan gave birth to her daughter, she experienced a love she never knew existed. Nothing would stand in the way of giving Bunny a wonderful life until the unthinkable happened. And the seven-year-old vanished into thin air. Eve found herself in the throes of a nightmare from which there was no escape. But a new Eve emerged, a woman who would use her remarkable talent as a forensic sculpture to help others find closure in the face of tragedy. Now with the help of her beloved Joe, Joe Quinn and CIA, and CIA agent Catherine Ling, Eve has come closer than ever to the truth. But the deeper she digs, the more she realizes that Bunny Father is a key player in solving this murderous puzzle. And that Bunny disappeared disappearance was not a as random as everyone had always believed yeah i think this is yeah this is going to be a series and i think this um maybe they did the first book on what is that channel lifetime one of those channels they, they uh, made a movie a lifetime movie out of it or something because i think uh lifetime uh do a lot of average johansson uh turn a lot of her books into movies on there and i think they I think they did. I think I watched it. I don't know which, which book this is in the series, but I'll check it out. Give it a try. Next, I got Linda Howard, Killing Time. I don't think I've read this one because I read the back of this and it don't seem like it didn't uh, trigger any memories. I'll read a little bit of this. And this this look like it's brand new. Somebody must have just brought this into the library. Let me read a little bit of this, this to you. In 1985, a time capsule was buried under the front lawn of a small town county courthouse to be reopened in 2085. But just 20 years later, in the dead of night, the capsule is dug up and its content stolen. That same night, one of the contributors to the capsule is brutally, brutally slain in his home with no sign of forced entry or in indication of struggle. One by one, others who had placed items in the time capsules are murdered. Beside his suspicion about the sudden mysterious appearance of Nikita Stover, chief investigator, Knox Davis has ab absolutely no leads. The smart-talking Nikita may be no murderer, but she seems to be hiding plenty of secrets. With more, with more at stake than anyone else with more at stake than anyone else realizes, Nikita is determined to catch this cunning killer while at the same time battling her own deepening feeling for a man, for a man and for a world in which she doesn't belong. That's sounding interesting, so I'm like, let me check this out. And this is Killing Time by Linda Howard. 
And last one I got from the library is Georgina Gentry. I haven't read anything by her in a long time. I used to read uh, a lot of her books back in the day, a lot of her historical. And this is called Travis. And I guess this is also a, uh, in a series, the Texan. Maybe this is the Texan series, but I don't know which book it is. So uh, I'm going to read a little bit of back of this one. I don't know why I keep saying I'm going to read a little bit and I end up reading the whole thing. So, yeah, I'm just going to read the synopsis. <laughs> After Texas Ranger Travis Prescott gets into a deadly confrontation with an outlaw, he suffers an injury that puts an end to his career. Making his way back to Texas, Travis is unable to shake a pretty young woman and four orphans who insist on traveling with him. He wants to send them packing, but he can't abandon them, especially the violent eye beauty who has captivated his imagination. Saloon Girl, Saloon Girl Violet LaForge is bent on starting a new life. Taking pity on the orphans abandoned at the train station, Violet knows, Violet knows travel is the only chance they have of getting to Texas safely. Now, now she must convince Travis she and the children are worthy of his protection and his heart. So that sounded interesting. So I was like, let me give this one a try. The Texas, the Texan. So when I come back and give you an update on this, I, I will know uh, what book that is in, in the Texan series. And I have three more books here. These books I purchased. Uh, well, one of my purchase, the other two I got for free. So first up I have here, and I got this off of Amazon, is Beverly Jenkins Rebel. I saw this cover. I had to have it. Love this cover. I didn't care what the book was about. I was like, yeah, I got to get this cover. So there it is, Beverly Jenkins Rebel. And I hope it turned out to be, oh, uh, this is going to be in a series. There you go. Women Who Dare series. And I don't know which book this is in the series. If you have not read anything about Beverly Jenkins, you need to check her out. And I'm going to read some of the synopsis of this. Belinda Lacey's mission in the steamy heart of New Orleans is to help the newly in emancipated survive and flourish. But soon she discovers that here freedom can also mean danger. When thugs destroy the school she has set up and then targets her, Belinda runs for her life and straight into the arms of Captain Drake LaVie. I hope I'm pronouncing that last name right. As an architect from an old New Orleans family, Drake has a deeply personal interest in rebuilding the city. Raised by strong women, he, he recognizes Belinda's determination and he can't stop admiring or wanting her. But when Belinda's... Maybe that's Belinda. Look, I'm saying Belinda. That's Belinda. When, but when Belinda's father demands she return home to marry a man she doesn't love, her daring, rebellious, her daring rebellion draws Drake into an irre irresistible intrigue. So that sounds interesting, but I bought it for the cover. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. And next, I got this one for free off of Amazon because I had some, uh, I'm a Prime member. And I had some prime points, so I got to get this one for for free. And this is Fly With Me. <coughs> and this is also in a series. This is a Wild Aces romance series. And I don't know what uh, book this is. Maybe this is book one. I'm not for sure. Don't take my word on that. And this is by Channel Cleeton. First, look, if I look right here, I see it first in a new series. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going on and on, and there it is right in my face. Yeah, let's move on to the back of the book. <laughs> U.S. Air Force fighter pilot Noah Miller, call sign Byrne, loves nothing more than flying hard and fast when he meets a gorgeous and sassy woman while partying in Las Vegas. He, imme he immediately locks on to her. Jordan Callahan owns a thriving clothing boutique but her love life is far less successful. Her look changes when six feet, two inches of sexy swagger asks her to dance and turns her world upside down. One scorching weekend becomes an undeniable chem becomes an undeniable chemistry that they can't leave in Vegas. But the long distant relationship and their different lives threaten to ground their romance. And when the dangers of Noah's job becomes all too real, Jordan learns being a fighter pilot. 
Jordan learns being with a fighter pilot means risking it all for a shot at love. So when I found out they probably going to be having some long distance relate. I like um, books that the couple are not in the same place. You know, they, they got the they got having a long distance relationship to see how it all going to work out to see what's going to happen. I like that kind of stuff. So that's why I got this one. Fly with me. A wild aces romance. And this is uh, by Channa Cleeton. And I'll find out which book this is. I don't know why I keep saying it. It's the first book. The, this is the first book in the series, people. Yeah. <laughs> My mind is, I don't know. I'm out of it today. And last but not least, I have this book. I got this off of Paperback Swap. I think I mentioned Paperback Swap on here before. It's where you can go on there and you can get books. I'm not going to say you can get them for free, but pay 40 cent. I don't think it costs anything to join the site. You just have to put your books on there. You just have to have books on there. And you have to have uh, points where people have requested books from you. And that's how you get your points. And once you get your points, you can also put money into your account. So that when a book is a book that you requested that's been on hold, like you might request a book and it's not there on the site. You're... You can just, it'll just be in your um, wish list. And um, once somebody posts that book, if you're the first or second or third person in line, whichever, however you're in uh, line for that book, um, if you're the first person, then you, they'll send you a, a message that um, the book you requested, and you just have to go there and say, yes, I do want this book. And then they'll send the, then the message will be sent to the person who sent you the book. I can't explain it good, but that's how it works. And it's a great way to get books for cheap. Like I said, you're only going to pay like 40 cents or however they need, however much they need for, to, for them, for you to use the site or whatever. Um, but to sign up, there's I don't think it, when I signed up I signed up almost when they first started the site so I I didn't pay and I don't remember paying anything I don't think you have to pay anything I just think you have to because uh, I don't put any money in my account if I get a book that I request and it, it pops up I just go to uh, PayPal and I just do my PayPal and send them the 40 cent and do it that way because they have PayPal on there they have um like you can put your, if you want to put a credit card on there or you can use PayPal. Just go in there and check it out. It's called Paperback Swap. I, I really enjoy it. Um, they're not expensive. If you uh, have a book that you want or a book that you can't find anywhere else, just go and put it on Paperback Swap. You live, it don't, somebody will finally post it on there and you'll be able to get it. Because this has been on my um, wish list forever. And I finally got it. And it's Standout by Laura Dane. It's a Cascadian Wolves. Another series. Boy, they've been doing a lot of series lately. I, and I don't know which one this is in the series. But it's not that um, much. Uh, it's just a short little read here. How many pages is in here? Uh, 217 pages. And this is like a paranormal. Going to be on some wolves. Uh, I'll read the back of this. For most of his life, K. Warden has put the needs of his pack first, setting aside everything else, even the emptiness he feels for having no mate. But Warren Pellini and his thugs have a biological weapon threatening everything K. holds dear. And to his, his intensely focused, lonely life walks the woman he's been waiting for. Packless for many years, Grace Pellini has, has edged back into the good graces of her evil brother. Walking a dangerous line to gather information to aid the nationally allied packs. Kate is everything she could have hoped for in a man and a mate, even if he can even if he can be pushy and overprotective. Probably gonna be a hot and steamy novel. And this is Standoff by Laura Dane. So this is should be a quick little read here. And I'll give that a try. But that's all I have. Oh, this is from and look, it have thrift books on here. Somebody must have got this from thrift books. And then they ended up putting it on paperback swap. Yeah. That's all I have for now. Um, I'm going to come back with another video this week. It might be. I have my reveal book box. I haven't opened it for this month. So, yeah. I'm going to probably be opening two boxes in July. Because I haven't opened it. So, I'm going to come back um, sometime this week. And do the reveal book box. Or I'll, as you can see. I have some books I need to go through. I'm going to still be doing my uh, book unhaul. Or I might just do my unhaul. And then I'll do the reveal, re reveal book box. But 
it'll be one of those two that I come back and do this week. But that's all I have for now. Continue to have a great Sunday and keep reading those romances. And I'll see you sometime this week. Bye-bye.